have no contradiction to eternal gains. I can grow my gains here as long as it's not a contradiction for the gains that I'm going to have for all eternity. I want to begin with a, a tradition we have, talk about being productive. This is a tradition that we have from Rabbi Nassim, that he got it from his rabbi, Rabbi Nachman from Breslov. Anybody heard of Rabbi Nachman? Yes. So nice to see so many uh, smiling faces. Oh, very good. So Rabbi Nassim said, you know, when a person is asked, so how are you doing today? So how, what's the general response? If you were to go and do a poll of people on the streets, go to Times Square, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. I'm good. Okay. Average. Average. Somebody told me today, could be worse. <laughs> you know, could be worse. Eh, not so good. Yeah, you know, or, yeah, okay. How's it going? Getting by, you know. Inflation, you know, it's like, it's, 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 it's killing me, you know. I'm, I'm dying out here, man. I'm dying. You know, it's kind of typical. So, Rav Nassim said, when a person says, yeah, it's not so good. So God looks down and says, oh, you think that this is bad? Let me show you that it could, it's not, this is pretty good. Let me show you what bad looks like. But when a person, God forbid, but when a person, let's say he doesn't feel like he's as growth or productive, but, but you know what? He says, somebody says, how are you doing today? He's like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Baruch Hashem, I'm good. I'm appreciative of the things that are going well. So you know the way God looks down? He says, oh, you think that's good? Oh, let me, you think that, I'm going to show you good now. Thought that was good. Let me show you some real good. And then Hashem opens up all the gates. All the gates of good. Remember, your words are very, very powerful. We just had that in the parasha. Lo yachal devarai. Don't profane your words. Your words create reality. Your words create reality. Be very aware of that. That's a big thing that guys learn in yeshiva. You come to yeshiva, and all of a sudden you see people speaking very nicely. And a very common thing that happens, and when guys in yeshiva, so what happens? There's one thing that's strangely, strangely absent from here. Curse words? I was going to say something else, just it would have been, you know. But yes. Women? Women. <laughs> that is. <laughs> yes, it's true. There's no women here. Even though we're very happy uh, that, that women, uh, they have. It's just, everybody knows if women would be here, there wouldn't be as much Torah learning happening. It would be a very big distraction. And that's not because we don't like women. We, in fact, we love women. It's, it's actually to the contrary. It's because we love women so much and we respect who they are and we get married to women, and we're loyal to women, that we understand that if we had a learning environment where there was just women everywhere, well, there wouldn't be much learning, and there would be less of an authentic connection with each one because there's something called tithes. There's something else, though, that's strangely missing, and that was already mentioned. Yeah, curse words. So a person comes to yeshiva, and he notices, like, why aren't guys swearing? Like, why, why don't they just swear? Like, that's what goes on in the bars. And then all of a sudden, you spend a few months in yeshiva, and one of the guys, he just slips a little bit and says, sweat, and like, ooh, like, ow, dude. Why'd you like, like elbow me in the ribs? That hurt. That hurt me. That was, that was nasty. That was a horrible word. Like, that hurt me. And it could be that you were never sensitive to that before, but you come here and you realize that words are very powerful and negative words, they, they, they jab into us. And you start learning that not just that negative words destroy, but positive words build. You build your eternal life through words. We do all, what do we do all day here? Talking. We talk all day long. We talk words of Torah. We talk words of building. Talk words of positive manifestation. Yes, Max. I just Give me a business idea, but I'm Business idea. I'm always happy to hear a good business idea. Drugs are taken, or it does, or it can't exist. Either it can't exist by law, by Jewish law, or it was already taken. 
but is there like a matchmaking like you see where, where there's men and women together and they find their soulmate or that are in existence against Jewish The Shidduch system. <laughs> so, Baruch Hashem, we have something called the Shidduch system, the Shidduch and yeah, the idea is, is that why, why would a person, why would a person go looking for, if he's really looking for the love of his life, someone that he wants to care for, love, take care of, honor, cherish, be deeply respectful of, have children with, why would the way to find that person be drunk and high at a bar and a club where 50 other people are all eyeing the same people right. and, with, and totally, uh, you know, in, a, in an immoral situation with no kind of thoughts of commitment, people just totally depressed and having some parasitic, well, I'm not happy with my life and you're not happy with it, we'll just try to, you know, see if we could be unhappy and fill that void in each other that's actually not going to be found through you, but really that's saying that I need to fix myself before I go looking for the one that I'm going to take care of the rest of my life. Isn't it a very intelligent thing to try to do that at some, you know, bar, you know, all, you know, doped out and drunk out? So, oh, very good. So that's the idea, is that we understand that the sacredness of marriage, which is falling apart, is falling apart. It's falling apart. The sacredness of marriage is something that a person goes into marriage when they're ready for marriage. When they're ready for marriage. Meaning, they've worked on themselves sufficiently to be called a half that's complete. And then they find their other half, who's now a complete half. And then the two complete halves come together as one. But they have to at least complete their half become a complete half. And therefore, the way to do so is to do the growth now. And then, when two people come together as two halves, then they're ready, they're mature, they know what they need to move things forward. Yeah, Did Dylan? you say we're always growing? So how can you have a complete half you're always growing? You're, gonna, you're, you're always going to grow. But now you're going to grow as a whole as a complete one. That one complete being is now going to be growing and growing and growing. Isn't that where you can like plateau in learning by yourself? Where like you're making for sure, yeah. There's, there's only so much you could do at a certain point. You have to get married, for sure. Now, it doesn't mean you're a complete perfected half, but you're as close as possible. For example, if a person's got real anger issues, so he gets married before he deals with that, that's going to explode. That's going to when the stresses go up and when the, uh, you know, wait till kids come and there's, you know, babies waking up in the middle of the night and less sleep and you've got financial responsibilities that are growing. So, you know, the bottle gets shaken up and eventually it just pops. So a person says, yeah, but I want to get married. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. Even those guys got a super short temper. That's not a good idea. You gotta deal with that as much as you possibly can. Does that mean that the guy literally never ever gets angry? No. no. And by the way, one spouse will find the ways to refine out even the last little bits. We'll find the exact buttons that need to be fixed. Well, they will exactly, just the guy who thought that he was Mr. Angel and never gets angry and he really worked on himself, you'll see there's still a little bit ways to go. So Dylan, that's the, that's the answer, is that you, we're never fully, even though some people could, but you don't have to wait until you're 100%, but you better be pretty close. Well, then how, how would you know? How would you know? Uh, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Very bad idea. Uh, the way to know is that when you have people around you who have been through a good part of life and, and they've seen relationships, they've seen angry people on not just like one, two, three, five, ten, but they've seen people through decades of what angry people look like and you spend time with them and they say that I've seen you grow and I see actually that you've really made major strides. 
Because sometimes we don't see it fully ourselves, but somebody else who loves us, around us, mentors, great people around us, they could see it and they could say, oh, I see that you, you're of the caliber where we feel that, wow. And they'll say, oh, how do you feel? Let's say this says, I still feel I'm an angry guy. Okay, so maybe there's more to, to work on. But let's say somebody says, you know, I really think that you've come a long way and you're doing very, very well. So the person thinks about that. You know what, I have come a long way. I have come a long way. And that has to go with all of your character traits. So that's one of the answers, is that when we are sitting in an environment where you can actually focus now on growing, that's going to allow you to successfully find the one you're looking for. But Max, if, if all the girls are just here right now, yeah. so and everyone's like, Max, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm good, you know, I, I'm you totally you worked you out. To, to like, I'm talking about like yeshiva, you actually come to expecting to find yourself. Oh, the yeshiva is a separate thing. So the, so the idea is that the men are growing themselves, the women are growing themselves. Yeah. Intelligently. 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 intelligently and yeah. each one understands that if, if, if we were just all hanging out together, yeah. then you know what would happen? No, we really wouldn't be working on ourselves because no, we'd be working on impressing they, the other one. Be in like separate buildings, but then they would mingle like so, one day a week. <laughs> mingle night. So, 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 so yeah, so we have something. It, it's called, it's called Shiduchim. And instead of calling it mingling, we call it... That, yeah. Instead of calling it mingling, we say that once each person, the, the man is ready, the woman is ready, you have, and think about this just from a logical, you have a very intelligent process where somebody who knows both you guys. Maybe it's even the rabbi. Maybe it's the Revitan because Max, you went to hang out at Rabbi Rossman's house, and like the rabbi saw, you know, you know Rabbi Rossman, he's the head of the issue. And, you know, the Revitan, his wife, she sees you, she sees the way that you're so, your, your manners and you're nice, and well, and then she sees you again a few months later. And then you're in yeshiva, oh, and then Rabbi Rossman gives a report, oh, you know, Max, he's, he's shtagging, this guy is really doing well, he's learning up toysfus like nobody's business, and he's growing and growing and growing, and the Rebbe and Rossman's like, you know, I, I, I have this girl, and Aisha Spire, you know, we, by the way, we're starting a new seminary for girls, we have already the post high school one, and we have another seminary for Balas Chuvas, girls that want to find their way home, opening here in Yushalayim next year. So for all the women, they have a place to come. And Rabbi, Rabbi Rasman knows all those girls. And then she says, so, you know, I think Max would be a very nice candidate for Sprintzy. 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 <laughs> and Rabbi Rasman's like, I, you know what? That's a very nice idea. Because I, of his, he has these personality things, and, it, and they're thinking like, oh, yeah, this might be a good idea. And all of a sudden, you're sitting in the base medrash, and you know what you get, Jordan? You get the famous proverbial tap. You know what the tap is? Tap water? Get the tap. We try to avoid tap water at all costs because of the fluoride and the chlorine. But get a Berkey filter. But the tap. The tap means you're sitting in the base medrash, staggering away, and they just go, you know. Oh, Rabbi Asma, how are you? Can you come to my office? I have something to... Share with you. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me just close my gamon. I'm coming right now. Okay. <laughs> close the door. Please sit down. Please sit down. So, Max, I noticed that you've been doing tremendous you know, growth and you're doing very well. Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Baruch Hashem. So happy to be in Yeshiva. It's an amazing thing. I just wanted to, you know, you know, see how things are going. And, you know, were you thinking about, you know, you know getting into the parsha? Like, like the weekly parsha. Like Parshas Matos, Masai, right? Like the, the Torah portion. No, I was speaking about another Parsha. <laughs> another Parsha. You know, Parsha means a topic. Parsha means this. Another Parsha in your life called the Parsha of building a beautiful Jewish home. Oh. Oh, that's what the tap was about. Well, actually, Rabbi, I have been thinking a lot about it because, you know, it's really the most important thing that I want to do is have a beautiful home and I have a wonderful mate to grow with and have a beautiful family with. And, and he says, yes, yes, that's, that's the first mitzvah in the Torah. And I see that, you know, you've been doing a lot of growth. I mean, I'm trying, I'm really trying to be the greatest uh, yid possible. And then he says, well, let's get down to business. We have an idea for you. Her name is Sprintzy. 
Oh, Sprinzi, that's a very nice Jewish name. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, well, she's like this and like this and like this. When you know, maybe, you want to maybe meet her? So you're like, you think it's a good like, You know Sprinzi. My wife and I know Sprinzi very well. She comes to the house, she helps with the kids. We know Sprinzi very well. Like, oh. And you think like we might, you know, like we've got, you know, she's got common interests just like you. You know, Mac, you, you play guitar or whatever. Oh, Sprinzi plays guitar. Oh, that's nice. It's nice to have, you know. You don't have to have a duet with your wife and guitar, but it's a nice starting point. Like, maybe there's something to talk about here. Okay, interesting. Oh, and she's interested in this, and she has this. And all of a sudden, you're, you know, this, okay, okay. You know, what are you doing tomorrow night, you know? I was going to come to the Night Seder, but uh, I guess I'm going to the Waldorf Astoria to meet Sprincy. Okay? Yeah, just go, enjoy, have some coffee, Coca-Cola, you know, whatever you want. You know, take, you know, pick up the tab, and, you know, have a good time. Pick her up in a cab, take her back to, to Aish, Aspire, and, uh, and you're like, sounds good. Sounds good. How will I know it's her? So when you get there, you'll see, just, you know. You'll be wearing, uh, you know, this, and I'll tell her, and then she'll see, and I say, well, and you go to meet Sprincy, and you guys have a nice time, you know. The conversation goes well, you've had a good vibe. Afterwards, you're like, Sprincy, it was nice to spend that time together. Maybe we'll, uh, you know, I'd like to continue this. Like, yeah, this is very nice. And he goes again, and again. Now you realize, you're only meeting Sprincy because she's ready to get married. And you got the tap. By the way, you don't need the rabbi to give you the tap. You could tap yourself, but I hope you're sane enough to do that. Many of us think, yeah, I'm ready. You know, let me just take a, a hit of the bong first. But yeah, <laughs> let's get married. Uh, maybe wait for the other, from the rabbinic tap on that one. And all of a sudden, you have two mature people meeting don't you think the odds, and they, they know where they're going, of a successful beginning of marriage is, is, is a way higher logical sequence than two people just like randomly meeting in, in the bars and all the heartbreak that that brings? So my friends think about this. This is the sequence of some of the Jewish dating process, my friends. Tomorrow is going to be our last year for the summer. I'm traveling. Besiat Deshmar, we're going to go into the last section for this, uh, for this time. Traveling to go see some family, Besiat Deshmaya. This is going to be our last section on Avoid the Zara, on, on idol worship. And then next Zman, next semester, Elo. I'm very, very excited that we're going to continue the third of the Sheish Mitzvahs which is by far the most Kabbalistic section. It's called Unity of God. It's basically as much Kabbalah as, Kabbal as we could pack into you know, this 30 minute a day slot. And it's basically how, it's basically the stuff that like the sages were studying in the caves, that all that exists is God. All that exists is God. And that a, the deeper a person is aware of that, the more ecstasy they experience in their life of feeling totally unified with the creator of the world at all seconds. And this is going to be the secret of the most, I can't believe I'm using this word, popular Jewish phrase. I'm sorry to even to call it that. Probably the most powerful Pasuk in the Torah, which is Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. What that means and all of its secrets coming up, that's going to be in Elo. My friends, have a wonderful day. We should be Zerah the Mashiach. Amen. 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 Amen.